So recently, Games Workshop showed off a bunch of huge reveals at the Las Vegas Open. There were actually a way more reveals than I expected. And some of them were really, really big. Like, too big for their own good. Hmm. But there was one reveal that really hit me in a certain way. A way that I did not expect. And in a bad way, too. It was possibly the most disappointing reveal that I've seen in a really long time. And I was surprised. I didn't expect to be this disappointed in this product. And what I'm talking about are the reveals for Kill Team. So at the LVO, a new Kill Team box set was showed off. It's called the Soul Shackle, and it's set in the Gallo Dark. Again, that's the current season of Kill Team. And you've got Arbites versus Dark Eldar. So there's some good elements here, but there's also a really disappointing element. Something I don't really hear people talk about very often, but the one that basically has killed Kill Team for me. It's a Kill Team Kill Team. So, on the one hand, I actually really like Arbites, and I really like Dark Eldar. Arbites have always been really cool. They're clearly inspired by Judge Dredd. Inspired in big, big quotation marks there. It's the kind of inspiration that would have Games Workshop trying to shut down your Etsy store. Let's just put it at that. They've moved a little bit closer towards a kind of more of a knight aesthetic. I think it looks cool. I think they look cool. I also like the fact that there's BDSM elements in there. Gimp masks. It just does it for me. So the models look pretty cool. There's also a doggo. There's a little doggy. Looks really neat. And you've already presumably seen a ton of people already going ham about the models. Basically, anytime Games Workshop reveals any amount of new miniatures, everybody loses their minds. They look fine. They look good. The Dark Eldar less so. They're like the losers of the box. They basically get an upgrade sprue. So you're going to be looking at using just a standard Kabalite squad with an upgrade sprue here. Kind of like the tie in Chalnath. And as much as I'm a huge huge fan of the Kabalite Warrior box set. I actually think the Kabalite Warriors for the Dark Eldar are some of the best miniatures the Games Workshop have ever produced. This upgrade sprue doesn't seem to add too much. There's like a bird, like a needle gun. I, honestly, I just find it hard to kind of pick out what's unique and new about these Dark Eldar. There's nothing like stood out to me as particularly impressive. But the Dark Eldar are cool. I'm a big fan of Dark Eldar. But there's nothing compelling me to buy this box set as a Dark Eldar player, right? I've got like 2,000 points worth of Dark Eldar. There's nothing here that makes me go, ooh. And usually you need Dark Eldar to make you go, ooh. So there we go. We've talked about the models. We get that out of the way, right? Because there's something else I want to talk about. There's like a deep, dark secret to Kill Team that sort of frustrates me. And uh, it's not the price, okay? We've talked about the price a lot. It's kind of rich that these big box sets are being sold. You get one new group of models and then an upgrade sprue. It feels a bit cheap. But okay, there we go. We set that to one side. Although it is incredibly expensive. The thing that disappoints me about Kill Team is actually related to the game itself, but also the models that are sold for it. So firstly, the gameplay felt extremely innovative when it first came out. That's the good news. Kill Team was a huge breath of fresh air for me. As someone who's been playing a lot of Games Workshop products for like two decades now, Kill Team felt like a genuinely different thing. They were trying some new mechanics. There was like the conceal mechanic, the cover mechanic was all different. It was extremely innovative for Games Workshop. It really felt like the designers had been playing, you know, Infinity, and they'd taken, they cribbed off these other games, which is good, by the way. I think that leads to better games overall whenever designers steal from one another. And as a result of this, Kill Team felt like a more modern war game. It felt like a game for the 21st century, as opposed to Warhammer, which is very much a game from, like, the 90s. Now, that all said, Kill Team as a game isn't my favorite game. I think I'd probably prefer it to Warcry, but I think it's just okay. There are other skirmish games I would prefer to play. I feel like it's a little bit clunky. It suffers from a lot of the Games Workshop business practices, which basically tends to ruin games. You've got annuals, you've got stats all over the place, you've got different ways of buying miniatures. It gets really confusing. New people find it really difficult. The train's scattered about. The train has bespoke rules. Okay, you get it, you get it. Now, the actual game itself has been getting sold via these big, massive box sets. Soul Shackle is just the latest in a long line of box sets that came before it. And I don't like these. They push the price up for the average player player. They're massive bundles and it also means that it takes months for new models to kind of make their way through the pipeline. You get a new big box set and then months later when the next big box set comes out, the previous box set's models come out separately. I think that's a pretty bad release model and it was kind of pioneered with Kill Team. It's not in fact did Warcry as well. I can't remember which one did it first but they're both as bad as each other at this stage. And this meant that as players, if you're looking to keep up, you kind of have to buy the new box sets as they come out, especially for like competitive players. But even more casual players who just want to, you know, buy the new miniatures for the skirmish game that they 
play because skirmish games tend to be a little bit more affordable than army level games. You've got to buy massive bundles. You've just got to buy massive bundles. That's what Games Workshop have said. You 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 have to buy the bundles unless you want to wait. Because never in the history of things have people waited a long time for stuff to reduce in price. People who are enthusiasts, who are fans, like to buy things new. So Games Workshop has taken advantage of that. But there is a strength to this release model. Aside from making Games Workshop tons and tons of money. And that strength is that it allows Games Workshop to kind of explore the galaxy. It allows them to display and depict different settings for Kill Team. And this was originally one of the major selling points of Kill Team. So for example, when the first box came out, it was called Octarius. This was like the first release for the new Kill Team. Uh, this was specifically set on the planet Octarius, and it depicted a specific battle between orcs and Imperial Guard. Cool. That was kind of neat. The architecture was orky, and there was this kind of like desert vibe to the whole thing. This wasteland, this junkyard wasteland kind of vibe. And Games Workshop, when they released this, kind of premised it on the idea that future box sets would actually be glances and looks at different Kill Team settings. And then the next box set came out, that was Time vs. Sisters. And just like Octarius, it came out with a bunch of terrain and the two different uh, groups fighting each other. And the two factions fighting each other, okay, fine, but the terrain was kind of generic. It was sort of like Cathedral terrain, I guess based sort of on the sisters. The idea was that the sisters were reconquering this planet. And honestly, that terrain felt like it could very much fit straight into a Warmer 40k battlefield. It wasn't really designed for Kill Team, which was kind of disappointing because Kill Team has some really specific rules for terrain. Specifically, you want to have a ton of terrain. It's really, really reliant on having really, really heavily overlaid tables. And in theory, that means that you can have really cool evocative tables, but the releases since Chalnath have just been more of the same. We got Nachmund after that, which was, again, just another desert planet. It had some sector mechanicus terrain, which was actually, I think, originally released in the Dark Imperium magazine. So it was just more generic 40k terrain. Then we had Morok, which was probably the worst because it came out, again, another desert planet, just another shade of brown. And the actual terrain itself was more generic 40k terrain, and it wasn't even suitable for Kill Team, really. It was just big, flat terrain. It made for a terrible Kill Team board. So whenever I first heard about all of these, you know, whenever I first heard about Kill Team, I thought they were going to take the opportunity to use these box sets to actually release some interesting pieces of terrain, some innovative new terrain, and some really interesting biomes to fight within. I mean, if you look at a game like Dawn of War, for example, the different factions had extremely different terrain from one another. The Eldar buildings looked way different from the Space Marine buildings, which looked way different from the Orc buildings. The Chaos buildings obviously had very big similarities with the Space Marine buildings, just a lot more spikes. But nevertheless, this was a huge opportunity for Games Workshop to kind of flesh out the, the architecture of 40k, and they just didn't do it. Just sandy board with generic 40k Imperium terrain. The territories had like zero personality and the matchups felt really weird. The box sets generally from Kill Team have been extremely disappointing to me as a result. So then, imagine whenever Games Workshop announced Into the Gallow Dark. And this was a whole new set of terrain and expansion pieces. This is a new season of Kill Team. And I was kind of hoping that this would be a new iteration of Kill Team that kind of took those criticisms and did something with them. And oh boy, was it like the exact opposite. And this latest box set has just cemented my disappointment. Before we talk about that, I want to mention today's sponsor, me. Because as of today's video, this is your final opportunity to get some sexy orc models with a 40% discount. Blue Sky Minis currently are running a discount deal with my patrons. So patrons of Discourse Miniatures, they get a 40% discount code for the entire STL store for Blue Sky Minis. There's some really cool orc models. But that's not all. Next month, we will be running another discount. And that will be for Surrogate Minis, their STL store, which I'm really excited to talk about. But we'll talk about that next month. So yeah, if you are looking for discounts on 3D STL file sellers, then Discourse Miniatures Patreon is where you want to be. That's patreon.com slash discourse miniatures. Or click the link in the description below. Check it out. Prices are already cheap. Imagine getting massive discounts on top of that. Something which, by the way, would really suit Gallo Dark. 
So the kill team boxes for Gallo Dark, they're obviously extremely expensive. And one of the really sneaky elements of Gallo Dark is that it comes with predetermined terrain. If you want to play the new season of Kill Team, you have to buy these massive bundle box sets. This is obviously bad. It raises the barrier to entry for new hobbyists. And you can see my video on boarding actions for more on that. But at the very least, it had a cool premise. The Gallo Dark was a really neat premise, and fool that I was! I believed Games Workshop once again. So the Gallo Dark expansion is set on the Gallo Dark, which is a Space Hulk set in space. It's a giant conglomeration of ships that have all crashed into one another. It's like kind of space junk. And it's ships that have all accumulated over millennia. And it's an awesome environment, honestly, to set some battles. They're drifting in space and you're fighting down these tight corridors. And it's really something that hasn't really been done in Warhammer since the original Space Hulk game. One of the major, major, major pieces of marketing for the Gallo Dark was the idea that the Gallo Dark, because it was a conglomeration of different ships all smooshed together, it meant that the environments would be extremely varied. And that as the box released, we would be exploring different parts of the Gallo Dark. And as a result, there'd be all these different environments and sections that you'd be fighting over with all their own little bespoke mechanics. And at the time, I was worried because I thought that this would mean that each box set would be pretty vital to play the complete experience. So I wanted them to release this stuff separately. But it turns out that I need not have worried at all because every single one of these box sets are incredibly superfluous to the core experience, which I think is probably like the only thing that could be worse than making them incredibly vital. So whenever Games Workshop said about the different sections of the ships, I assumed that that meant there'd be like Xeno sections of the ship and Imperial sections of the ship and Chaos sections. And each box set would come with these flavored different pieces of terrain that would all look different from one another. But no, no, Soul Shackle, the newest reveal from the LVO, is box number three in the Gallo Dark season. And uh, what do we get? Generic Imperial Walls. Basically, identical terrain to box set one and two. They are all the exact same generic Imperial terrain. Every single one of them. And even worse than the original Kill Team, they're not even different pieces of terrain. The original Kill Team boxes all looked pretty semi. They're all pretty boring. They were all reused 40k terrain. This time, they're all literally the exact same terrain. They're the same walls. They are doing what they did to the original kill team with Gallo Dark. And okay, okay, okay. There are some minute differences. So, for example, the second box set came with, like, some bomb disposal drones, which was kind of new. And the third box is coming with a control panel and some doors or something. You can kind of pop the, the wall off a little bit. There are very minute differences. They basically are, like, an afterthought. And when they were marketing Gallo Dark originally, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe my imagination kind of ran away with me. I just sort of expected by box three we'd be seeing, like, Eldar our ships and stuff. So you had this excuse to explore all this different architecture in the 40k setting. We just didn't get that. It's just soul shackled. Massive disappointment. It's just the same box set again. Not only that, but it seems like they've also stopped releasing models separate from the big box sets. So the models that came out for the first Gallo Dark, the Kurt and the Imperial Navy. And then the Kazurgan and Necron upgrade sprue, that hasn't been released separately either. So right now, if you want to buy into the Gallo Dark and you want to buy maybe like the Imperial Navy to play, you just can't. They're just exclusive to this massive bundle box set that, as far as I'm aware, is out of print now. So I guess like FOMO marketing from Games Workshop once again. And it's just not a way to sell a skirmish game. It's really not. There's other sellers out there who do a much better job of just producing box sets of minis and then they just sell the minis. There's just a much better way of selling them. This is not the norm in the industry. It feels like an aggressive push towards monetizing players even more. And even if they do plan on releasing these models separately, Games Workshop need to make that clear to the audience that that's going to be the case and be open about their release schedule so that we can actually know if that's the case. But no, it feels like they just want to rely on FOMO. So yeah, I'm just bitterly disappointed in Kill Team right now, which really sucks because it feels like it's a fun game hidden away 
behind just some really bad decision making, presumably from the executives of Games Workshop. Presumably this is the way they want it to be. It's the business model is ruining the game. There we are. By the way, if you're curious about why I've been so down on boarding actions, which is kind of the 40k equivalent of Kill Team's new terrain into the Gallo Dark, check out this video here. And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons, especially Sonic Bread and Crypto Kev. And I'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye.